Has fear ever stopped you from advancing in your career? It stopped me too, but that was early in my career. And then I began to understand my fear. I learned why and how it showed up. I learned how to respond to it. And then I learned how to proactively leverage it to advance my career. Even though I was afraid, I moved from being a programmer to becoming a systems engineer and then into sales and sales leadership. Even though I was terrified, I applied for jobs for which I did not feel fully qualified. I moved into fast growing lines of businesses I knew nothing about just to seek growth. I leveraged my fear to advance my career and I rose up to become one of the highest ranking women of color at IBM, a vice president. And I did all this while raising my two children as a single mother since they were two and four. Today, my goal is to show you how you can understand your fear, how you can respond to your fear with courage, and then how you can leverage your fear to advance your career. On April 14, 1985, I received a birthday gift that changed my life. It was a written job offer, and the starting annual salary of $27,000 was more money than my parents could earn in 10 years. I was so excited that I had tears of joy rolling down my cheeks. You see, I grew up in a small town called Mwanza in Tanzania. I had to leave home when I was 15 years old because there was no education past 10th grade. Being the first in my family to get a college degree and then as a foreign student with a one-year work visa, getting a job offer from a technology firm in the United States, making that much money was like my wildest dream come true. I couldn't wait to start my job. I couldn't wait to go to work every day. However, meeting after meeting, memo after memo, I began to notice that everyone had higher degrees than I did. Many had master's degrees and some even PhDs. And all of them from universities that were ranked much higher than mine. They were more experienced, they all had bigger titles, they all spoke better English than I did, and of course, nobody looked like me. I started comparing myself to them. I convinced myself that they were all better than me. I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that there is nothing I would know that they did not already know. So I could not create any unique value any differentiated value for my company to keep me past the one year. You see, if they could hire someone else to do my job, they would not extend my visa. I started undermining my capabilities and I started playing small. Sounds familiar? My excitement turned into fear. I was afraid that I did not belong in corporate America with my background. Whenever I was in meetings, every time I had an idea, I had a struggle within. Should I speak up or should I not? I was afraid if I spoke up, they will judge me. I was afraid I will sound stupid. My fear in its desire to protect me kept telling me it was safer to not speak up. So I never spoke up. And then one day, after about three months, I had a career-changing realization. It was a typical Tuesday afternoon at work. My coworkers and I, along with our bosses, were discussing an urgent problem with testing of our software. And I had a great idea, a really, really great idea. But as usual, I sat there quietly with fear's voice resounding in my head, telling me, if I opened my mouth, I might sound ridiculous and my bosses might realize that they made a mistake in hiring me, and perhaps they would even fire me. 
So I did not say anything. And then, as if the idea jumped from my brain into the brain of my colleague sitting right across from me, he said exactly what I had been thinking. Stunned, I watched the room literally light up with enthusiasm. Our bosses were so impressed, patting my coworker on the back. They began talking about how his idea was so unique, so valuable, and how it solved a critical problem for our entire organization. That's when I had my aha moment. I realized that it did not matter what I looked like. It did not matter what my accent was, what university I went to, what level of education I had, or how inexperienced I was. What mattered is that I had unique ideas that could contribute value. I had ideas that matter. That change in my belief was the inner victory I needed before I could have any external victories. That moment also taught me that fear, even though it was trying to protect me, it wasn't giving me the best advice. And it was definitely wrong in its predictions of what would happen. So a few days later, another meeting came up and I had another great idea. I thought about sharing it and once again, fear showed up as a loud voice in my head trying to protect me as it had always done in the past, telling me all the same old things about what could go wrong if I spoke up. But that day, another voice showed up, a voice I had not heard in a long time. It was my voice of courage. It was fueled by my change of belief from thinking that my ideas do not matter to knowing that my ideas do matter. My voice of courage chimed in. It started stating all the things that could go right if I spoke up. It said, speak up. Your ideas do matter. This is your opportunity to show them you have great ideas that can create unique value. Take this chance. If they like your idea, they will extend your visa past the one year. They might even sponsor you for a green card and you will be able to keep your dream alive by working in the United States of America. Your family and you will never have to be poor again. This possibility of what could go right if I spoke up started getting me excited. And in that moment, something strange happened. It was as if I became a witness to this debate going on in my head between the voice of fear stating all the reasons why I should not speak up and the voice of courage stating all the reasons why I should speak up. Suddenly, I realized these are voices in my head. They're having a debate in my head and I'm not my voices because I can hear them. I realized that my voices and I were separate entities. As I was watching them having this debate, I also realized that I could intervene. I could manage these voices. I own the power to determine who wins this debate. And so I intervened. I was now in control of this debate. I told fear, fear, I hear you loud and clear. I know you mean well and are trying to protect me. In fact, I feel you in my stomach, in my heart, and in my breath. But this time, this time I will not let you stop me. The rewards of speaking up are life-changing for me. So I must take this chance. I will speak up. I spoke up. My voice was trembling. My stomach was still in knots. My heart was racing even faster. And I don't believe I took a single breath until I finished stating my idea. My idea was well received. I was the one getting the pat on my back that day. And it was the first time since I started my job, I felt like I had contributed unique value. I felt I was valued by my organization, by my bosses, by my peers. A tiny moment in time, one idea in one of so many meetings since, but that experience made me realize that as hard as it is 
it is possible to respond to fear with courage. And I could do that by managing the voices in my head. From that day onwards, I faced many other fears. Every time my voice of fear showed up to protect me, and it would say something like, don't do this, this will not work out. I intentionally engaged my voice of courage in a debate and asked, what if it does work out? I controlled the debate between the voice of fear and my voice of courage, and I responded with courage. When it got difficult to manage the debate, I had to check in with my beliefs, as these voices were fueled by my belief. I had to change my belief when necessary. The more I did this, the better I got at managing the voices in my head. Do you hear voices in your head? Do you ever have a debate in your head? Which voice wins? Unless you become aware of your voices, your mental chatter, your voices run on autopilot, and you never get out of the cycle of doing what you have done in the past. But once you recognize that these are your voices, they are in your head, this is your debate, and you have the power to guide that debate, you can decide which voice wins, and you can change your response. You will no longer be on autopilot. So the next time you hear your voice of fear, remember, fear can have two potential outcomes. Forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. What will you choose? I hope you will remember this day and choose to face everything and rise. Choose to respond with courage, even though you are scared. Do it using these three steps. First, recognize that fear is a voice in your head. Know that your fear means well. It is trying to protect you and keeping you from getting outside your comfort zone. Don't react to it. Second, intentionally engage your voice of courage. That voice likes to hide sometimes. You may have to seek it. It might be soft at the beginning. Make it louder by encouraging it with the rewards of facing your fear or the risk of not facing your fear, whatever motivates you. Third, become a witness to this debate between the voice of fear and the voice of courage. Know that you can determine who wins. Respond with courage, even though you are afraid. Face everything and rise. Listen, I'm not suggesting this will be easy every time. Depending on how deep your fear is, it may take many attempts to respond with courage, and that's okay. Every time fear shows up, become aware of your mental debate. Try to respond with courage and then pause to celebrate yourself just for trying because success lies in trying and continuing to try. When you celebrate yourself for trying, you will strengthen your voice of courage. The more you do that, the louder your voice of courage will become and the easier it will become to respond with courage. Keep practicing this until you know you can respond to fear with courage. And once you have mastered responding to your fear with courage, you are now ready to proactively start leveraging your fear to advance your career. Actively seek assignments that are scary, assignments that push you outside your comfort zone. Push the boundary of your fear to take on scarier assignments. The scarier the assignment, the more you will be forced outside your comfort zone and the more growth you will experience. You will grow courage, you will grow competence, you will grow confidence. Give it your absolute best effort. Listen, you don't have to do all this alone. Ask for help when needed. Ask help from your peers, mentors, anyone that has the expertise you're seeking. You see, when you invest in yourself, when you are pursuing assignments that scare you, that stretch you, when you demonstrate the desire to grow and learn, most people will also invest in you. They will take the time to help you. At the end of every assignment, 
pause to reflect upon the experience and deeply recognize your growth. Realize that you were scared and did not know everything when you started. You learned and you grew along the way. Your growth becomes the starting point for your next assignment. Be grateful for your growth. Celebrate yourself for taking on this scary assignment. This continues to strengthen your voice of courage. After taking a few scary assignments in which you experienced growth, you are now ready to push the boundary of fear even further. You are ready to seek assignments that terrify you. Apply for jobs that you are not qualified for. Jobs that force you completely outside your comfort zone. Jobs that make fear show up in full force. This is an indication that you are on the cusp of doing something bold and risky in your career. And that's a great thing. You are about to learn how extraordinarily capable you really are. When you apply for such jobs, expect your fear of failure to show up like it did for me. It would scream in my head, don't apply for this job. Don't apply for this assignment. You will fail. I felt the fear of failure in every cell of my being. And even though I had become great at managing the voices in my head, it took me some deep introspection to find a great reason to feed my voice of courage. So when I was terrified and my voice of fear was screaming in my head, I engaged my voice of courage and I fed it the following. Take this assignment, you will succeed. You must take a chance on yourself. There is no such thing as failure. The individual outcomes don't matter over time. It is all about learning and growing. That growth stays with you forever. Once I redefined failure and focused on my growth, my voice of courage became strong, and I kept doing that again and again. You see, when you keep taking assignments, even when you are terrified, your voice of fear realizes that you don't need its protection anymore. It becomes softer and softer, and your voice of courage grows louder and louder. You will no longer be afraid. And when you are not afraid, you will rise to heights you may have only dreamt of before, like I did. I wish you reach heights that are beyond your loudest fears and success beyond your wildest dreams. Thank you. Thank you from TEDx Mercer Island High School Women.